Go the Distance, Chapter 19, Second Thoughts Are you nuts? Phil cried, rushing to the edge of the boat to look for the orchid, which had disappeared below the surface. You needed that flower. I don't need anything, Meg said defiantly, but inside she was already regretting her impulsiveness. What did I just do? Not to mention letting him leave without having him get us down the river, Phil continued to rant. We've got no sail at all, if you haven't noticed, and there's still no wind. We're basically stuck here. Meg hadn't thought about that. She stared at where the mast used to be and looked around for the paddles. In the chaos, they too had been lost. The air was sicking, sickeningly hot and sticky and completely stagnant. Meg looked up, hopeful for signs of an impending late afternoon storm, but there wasn't a cloud in the sky. She sat down on the cracked bench and stared miserably at the spot in the water where she had hurled the flower. That was not smart. She'd really slayed it into Hercules, too. Also not smart. This wasn't really his fault. She'd just gotten so mad. She placed her head in her hands. This is a mess. Yup, Phil said, sitting down next to her. Pegasus looked at them, forlorn. I'm sorry, Phil. Meg said, patting his hand. I've doomed us, haven't I? Pretty much. The day is almost done, and you'll have one last day in the underworld. If we even can get you there at this point. He gave her a look. What were you thinking? I don't know, Meg groaned. I started thinking about Hera and Athena watching me screw things up and laughing about it, and I got so angry. I hate the idea of them thinking I can't do this quest without Hercules' help. What god can't get things done on their own? A lot, actually, Phil admitted. Why do you think there's, they're always teaming up on things or looking to mortals for help? Meg paled. It's okay to not always have all the answers on your own, you know. The oars. Teamwork. Right. Oh, Phil, Meg groaned. I just imploded the best relationship I ever had. He patted her back. Chin up. You can't scare that kid away. He loves you. Sounds like a bad decision on his part. Is it? said a voice. Meg and Phil turned around. Pegasus jumped. A god was standing on the ship aglow in magenta, with rosy pink lips, long lashes, and the bluest of eyes. She wore a single shouldered gown held together by a heart shaped pin. Meg instantly remembered where she had seen her before, on Mount Olympus talking to Demeter. Aphrodite, Meg said in surprise. What are you doing here? Aphrodite smiled from ear to ear. Athena sent me, of course, and it looks like I'm in just in time if you were about to give up on love after one argument. She looked at Meg pointedly. I didn't think a girl as tough as you would be willing to throw it all away so easily. Meg stared at the god flabbergasted. How did she know that? Are all of you on Mount Olympus watching me screw things up down there? No, Aphrodite said with a laugh, but the glint in her eyes said otherwise. Let's just say many of us are invested in you, Megara, and we want to see you succeed, which is why aid is given when needed. Athena has declared herself your guide, and as such, she sent me to help you get past this unfortunate bump in the river, so to speak. Aphrodite looked out over the bow of the boat. Such a beautiful river to lead such a sad place. What a shame. She turned around. And it's unfortunate that your mast is broken and there is no wind to move you along. How are we going to fix that? We? Meg repeated and looked sideways at Phil. I guess we could start by patching the sail, but I can't do anything about the lack of wind. That's Notice's territory. Her mother always prayed to notice on the hot summer months, hoping the god of the south wind would bring along a thunderstorm to cool things down. Hades had always commended the god's pancha for hurricanes. Aphrodite's sparkling eyes seemed to cut through her. Oh dear, Athena was right to send me. Of course we can do something about this wind, by working together, as the satyr is so right to point out. Pil Phil puffed up his chest. Gods and mortals do so all the time. There is nothing weak about it. Meg felt her cheeks flush. It's just not the way I was taught to do things. Aphrodite sat down on the boat bench. I know. Your mother did the best she could, but her life was hard. 
Fia taught you to use your instincts and to rely on yourself to get by, and there isn't anything wrong with that, but don't you see? When you find someone worthy of your love, letting them help you is also powerful, just as you, in turn, have helped him. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. You have found a true partner in Hercules. Love means it's okay to lean on one another. Meg recalled something Athena had said. Sometimes your head will lead, and other times it will be your heart. I just don't want him to think I can't handle this quest on my own. He doesn't think that. Aphrodite sounded surprised. Hercules knows you're a strong, confident woman. It's one of the things he loves about you. Just like you relish in his big heart and ability to see the world in a bright way, you've opened yourself up to each other, which is a beautiful thing. But it's important to remember that when you let someone in your heart, you allow them to see all sides of you, even the vulnerable side. Loving someone does not make you any less strong. It means you trust in another, and they trust in you. That you can give, and you can take. No one is keeping count, she said softly. When you love someone, you want to give them the world. Meg placed a hand over her eyes. How could she have been so narrow-minded? Aphrodite was right. Wonder Boy wasn't trying to take away her power, he was just trying to be there when she clearly could have used a hand. Great, now what? I tossed the orchid in the river, and I can't even call on him to say I'm sorry. He had given her a one-of-the-kind gift, and she'd thrown it away on cavalierity. Aphrodite smiled. I have a feeling you two will just be fine, if you complete your quest in time, so why don't we focus on that? Put your faith in the journey, and the rest will follow. Trust in the journey. I can do that. Meg rubbed her hands together, happy to move forward. Maybe she could fix things, one step at a time, starting with the boat. First, we need to fix the mast. Using every bit of strength she possessed, Meg pulled it out of the water and drenched Pegasus in the process. Maybe if we anchor some more wood to it, we could hold it together to get down the river. She grabbed some of the debris from the boat. Phil, do you know if Agius left any supplies on the boat? Phil reached below the floorboard and pulled out a small box. He left some fishing things. Meg opened the box, pulled out the fishing wire. This should work. Within a half hour, they had fixed the mast, anchoring it to, with an assortment of fishing wire and fabric that had been ripped off the sail. They fastened new oars out of driftwood, and Meg had used the wood carving skill she had seen Agius use on their instruments to smooth the edges of the wood and to pull them through the water. There were still holes in the sail of the ship, but enough was intact that the sail could still catch wind if there was any. Ship is ready again. Now what? Aphrodite handed a daisy that Meg a daisy that appeared in a trail behind her. We trust notice will answer our prayers. Meg's stomach gave a lurch. Trust in prayers? They haven't worked when we tried to save Agius. That's why she had called on Hades. Sometimes we must take a leap of faith, Aphrodite said kindly. She will never get used to gods reading her thoughts. A leap of faith, just like the one she had taken when Wonder Boy wanted to slip away with her to row on that lake, or when Phil wanted to go over the falls. She had to open up and learn to just jump. Okay, let's call a notice. Phil grabbed a giant palm leaf and placed it over his head. That god is brutal. How do we know he won't send a storm that will blow us all away? Notice destroys crops all the time. Yes, but this time, Meg is asking to return somewhere. Notice finds favorable to the underworld. Aphrodite looked deep into Meg's eyes. Concentrate and believe he'll hear you, and I know he will. Maybe Aphrodite was right. In addition to hurricanes, Hades was always singing Notice's praises for causing famines in the heat of winter or wiping out an entire field of grain. If anyone could help a boat reach the underworld, it would be him. Let's think positive, Phil. At least the rain will cool us off. Meg closed her eyes and channeled all her energy into connecting with Notice. If you can hear me, God of Wind, the Great Notice, send your rain and wind down to the River Archeon so that this boat can move swiftly to the entrance of the underworld. She opened her eyes. Phil frowned. Still sunny. Keep going, Aphrodite encouraged. 
Meg thought for a moment. What would Notice respond to? What would he want, and what should, could she offer him? Notice, I promise you, the passenger on this boat is one that will win you favor with Hades. Send your rain down on us, and you will be rewarded. She paused. The gods seem to be, to like being in favor with one another, especially the powerful ones. Maybe Notice would appreciate the chance to show off for Hades. Bring all you have, wind, rain, thunder. Shake the heavens with your storm. We can take it. We need it and want it now. I beg you, Notice. She wrung her hands, trying to channel all the blind faith she could that, that, that this would work. And that's when she heard it, a low rumble of thunder. Red, I see clouds ahead. Big clouds, look. Phil jumped up and down and pointed to the dark clouds moving in fast, much as they had that day on Mount Olympus when she had incited the wrath of Zeus. Within seconds she felt drops of rain and there was a rustle through the trees as the wind picked up. The boat started to rock. Pegasus neighed with excitement. How could I ever repay you? Meg asked Aphrodite. I knew you could do it, the god smiled. Continue to open your heart to help and to new possibilities, Megara. It won't lead you astray. Her body started to glow brighter. We are watching you from above, praying for your safety and guiding you on this next chapter. There was a huge clap of thunder and then gigantic drops of rain began to fall. The boat took a la fast dip and lurched forward. I should go, Aphrodite said and started to evaporate. Be well, Megara. Meg reached for her suddenly. Please, tell Hercules I'm sorry. Tell him yourself when you see him, Aphrodite said and she reached into the water and swirled her fingers around. Oh, and watch the waves, she said as the water grew choppier and lightning flashed. You never know what the water will dredge up. As if in answer, the newly churning river splashed over the side of the boat and Megara saw a flash of something bright white, the orchid. She reached out and snatched it before it drifted away again. Holy Hera, Phil whispered. Look at that. Aphrodite said as she started to fade away once more. A flower as rare as this deserves to be cherished, don't you think? Thank you, Meg said, trying not to get emotional. The rain was coming down in sheets and she quickly p placed the flower in her satchel. There was a huge clap of thunder and what seemed to shake the boat loose. The rain was coming down so hard Meg and Phil had to squint to see as they both grabbed paddles and took their positions. Then the boat began to move at top speed. We're on our own again, Meg thought. But not really. Then she stuck her oar in the water and plowed onward.